Sometimes I'm worried something's actually wrong with me. But I think there's only a few people I would say that to. It takes every part of me to admit to it because then it becomes real. The fear is solidified. It's no longer just another trait to add on to the list of reasons why I feel mysterious and interesting. Instead of being some beautiful secret, it becomes an obvious tragedy. When describing my mental state, I always steer away from anything that would encroach upon my ability to still seem like a sane and normal person. I would hate more than anything to let my mind get in the way of my life, to let my mind get in the way of my beauty, to let the things that have happened to me define me. I've grown a love-hate relationship with the things I can't change about myself. The person I am today is who I've chosen to be, the way I've chosen to exist, and the way I want to exist. I've changed to be liked by others and by proxy liked by myself. I've grown a need for love from strangers, a need to be effortlessly cool and praised for it. Praised for the nauseating amount of time I spend looking at myself in the mirror, dissecting the reflection. first few and last times I brought up the concern that something might be actually wrong with me. The idea that my attention-seeking, hypersexualizing tendencies might not be considered normal. I was told that this sounds like the symptoms of being a woman. Is that it? I mean, yeah. You're a girl, a young girl. That's just the way it is. I laughed, but I had also done the research, reflected and carefully deconstructed and reconstructed my personality several times, observing every aspect to see where I fit in on the encyclopedia of what's wrong with you, a manual guide on how to feel crazy. But if those sleep deprived hours of obsessively Googling and reading and reflecting could all be wrapped in little to no clothes entitled, being a woman, I would buy it. You know packaging is what catches your eyes, right? It's what sells you on the product. And in my life, I am the product. So maybe I shouldn't question it. Maybe I should just ride the wave of messy sex and smudged makeup into the early grave I've deemed myself worthy of because that's what I like. I formed my personality, so I must like it, right? Why else would I be like this if I hadn't done it to myself? There was no one else to blame but yourself. <laughs> now isn't that right? When I ask myself these questions, I see the errors in my judgment. I'm not naive. I know that most of my issues stem from the situations I was placed into and the way I was born, but coming to that realization was painful. It's much easier to pretend that these destructive characteristics are done at the hands of myself rather than the life I was thrown into. Realizing that I'm not the one to blame for how I am, that I can't bat my cake to mascara eyes and change this, make this go away, because it is how I am. But this time, not by choice. I didn't choose to be myself. I'm stuck with it now, unable to break free from the lingerie, the mini skirts, the obsession, the deterioration and decoration, the meals my mother made me and the puking it all up, the love letters adorned with lipstick kisses and stained with tears, the push-up bras, the fragility and inevitability until the end. But when you think about it that way. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So a lot of you guys have been asking for some tips and tricks on how I make myself look the way I do. So I figured I'd put together a little manual guide on how to look like me. It seems almost beautiful, right? 